I read a report that showed one year of chronic stress, like what happened in 2020, mm -hmm. for most people, your brain can shrink three quarters of an inch. Just from yeah. that's because of high cortisol levels. So when you think about cortisol and what it does, it's it's a driver. But we, as long as you're in that fight or flight, gotta go, gotta go, worried mo mindset, your brain can't shut off and turn on your healing brain, what we call the thriving brain. So the same thing is true. We all we have to have these, if you want to call them peaceful weapons, to arm us against all this assault on our brain. I mean, right now. Our brain, we are, we are fighting right now, not a war in physical space and time. We're fighting a war in our mental space in this six inches between our ears. Who controls that controls the world. Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I'm Faust Chicho, and today I'm sitting here with Dr. Patrick Porter. That name may sound familiar to you. He was one of my first guests on the podcast, and it's a great honor to have him back on, talk to him about some of the exciting things he's got going on. Hey, Doc, give everyone a quick, uh, an abbreviated intro of, of, of yourself. So we, then we get into the good stuff. All right. Well, I've been in the, I've been in the field of brainwave entrainment pretty much my whole life. My father was a, a Silva mind control instructor, which now they call the Silva method. So we were using uh, technology driven meditation since I was a kid. And I've just been doing it ever since. I'm the inventor of brain tap, which is a, a personal evolution technology that helps you to use more of your brain's potential brain tap, tap into your brain's potential. And, and that's usually what I'm talking about around the world is how our brain can recover at any age and become optimized. And uh, the connection between uh, physical health and spiritual health is really important to me. Absolutely. He's, he's an OG in the game. He's been doing this man, since the eighties, since the early eighties, right? Yes. Yep. Wow. I, you probably had a big full head of hair at the time too. <laughs> Yeah, they can go to my Facebook page. They can see some of my old pictures. My brother's really good at documenting my past. <laughs> His brothers are good at that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and and you know, since then I've I've really had a chance to to explore and become you know very good friends with BrainTap. Uh, first the the subscription, um, which which you can get it. You don't need the headset to begin to enjoy the benefits, you can download the app and, and start exploring right away. Um, and there's a, amazing benefits when you purchase the headset. And that's because you have this array of infrared light technology that's being used. T tell them a little bit about the, 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 the benefits of the headset doc. So they understand that, that, you know, there's, you can use both and see, you know, immense progress in what you're working on, but, but there is added benefits to the headset. The biggest, the biggest benefit I tell people with the headset is the faster results. Uh, we found it takes about 50% less time to get to a place like better sleep or to uh, basically start to get rid of pain or whatever the issue is that our doctors are doing. But the, when you think about the mechanisms of action of the brain tap, light is the most underprescribed nutrient on earth right now. And, you know, people aren't getting enough light. And so that affects our mitochondrial health. And one of the things that we found out here in the last three years really was this thing called biophotaic exchange, which means the mitochondria actually communicating with other, the, through the cellular system, through light. When, when it used to be in the metaphysical world, we'd say we are light, you know, we'd have bumper stickers and driving around and thinking this, but now science is showing that we really are light. We are vibratory frequencies of light. And of course, sound is a part of that equation. So when we're feeding the light frequencies into the brain, uh, through the ears, like a lot of people look at me and they go, why do you have light in the ears? Well, people who are into biophotaic uh, exchange or uh, photobiomodulation is another way to say that, is that the hemoglobin absorb that light and take it to the cells that need it the most on their journey. So if a cell's dying, which in science they call apoptosis, then that cell will actually absorb that light energy and come back to life. Uh, these bodies were designed to be healthier and live longer than anybody ever dreamed of. But the problem is either your thoughts are getting in the way of that. So we, we fix that with brain tap with positive psychology and different things like that. Teaching people, I like to tell people, I teach people how to think, not what to think. And then we have to get rid of the uh, toxins that are in there. So what light does, we, we now also know that the brain only detoxes during level four sleep or 
when stimulated by biophotonic exchange. So that means that when the body actually begins to detox because of maybe lasers, low level light therapy, all of these different methods, when it, in the range of 470 to 8, 860 nanometer light, the brain actually responds to that light differently than other because that's the light that we have mostly uh, bathed in while we're awake. So if we wanna wake up the brain, we've got to use that light frequency. So we also put it through the eyes one of the things too that most people don't realize is 300 times more mitochondria in the eyes than there are in the brain. So that means that uh, when you, if you want to bring in light into the body, into the brain, the eyes are one of the best places. That's why some people would do what's called eye gazing uh, or sun gazing is maybe a way that a lot of people know it, where they would they would look Solar at the gazing, sun. Yeah. Sunri- yeah. So when you look at the sun at sunrise and sunset, they've actually had studies that showed that the gut biome rebalances. So, I mean, when you think about that, so light does a lot more than we think to the body. So light also, um, maybe we can get a little more into this later, but when we did our dementia study, what we can do is we can measure with the, something called the neurocheck, we can measure the brain's energy. And what we found was it goes from, of course, one to 100 is our scale. A hundred being like an Olympic athlete or, you know, somebody who's really been working on themselves in good health. Biohackers typically be in the, would be within the 90 to 100. I know that you, when you guys got measured, you're, you're pretty strong there. And so when these people, we were doing our dementia study, they were five and below. So that means even if they were eating the right foods, even if they were thinking the right thoughts, they didn't have the energy that their body needed to make the change because that ATP is actually the it's really the workhorse for the body for rebuilding and replenishing the health and it's depleted in them right it's it's, yeah they have no light yeah their their light is not turned on and it could be a a lot of things but usually it's lifestyle over years yeah you know the body will continue to rob peter to pay paul until there's nothing to rob anymore and then you know when the balance is due that's when we go see the big guy again you know so we we have to make sure that that we keep the energy levels up so you know if you want to have a highly functioning brain we need to really think about mitochondrial health because the brain the brain gets the first cut of everything we eat everything we drink everything we breathe and so these are all places that um you know people don't really work on like most people don't breathe yeah. right, just as one significant change. I mean, when people start getting into yoga or they get into breath work and they go, boy, I have so much energy. I don't know what happened. Well, that's because you weren't breathing before you were holding <laughs> your breath half the time yeah. and you weren't getting what you needed. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and, and listen, I don't care. You, you talk to 20 people and ask them about brain health, whether they're in the field or not they're not going to start talking to you about mitochondria and ATP. I'm sorry. They're just, they're probably not, you know, maybe they'll get into diet, but for the most part, you're going to hear some, you know, some neurochemistry stuff. I think that's my, my intuition on that. But um, you know, it's, it reminds me, we have so many wise sayings that we've inherited, you know, about light and about our bodies. And, and, you know, it's like every bit of wisdom that, still resonates that's thousands of years old has some truth to it it didn't come from the air and the more we learn it it just it blows my mind how much we're just catching up with what they already somehow knew you know way back then i'll I'll share something with the listeners that blew my mind when i was in india going on tour dr vik sharma who's the head of uh, physiology at ames institute he got up because we were talking about light we did the whole thing we did a tour of uh, seven universities there and he he did some research and he found out in the Vedas, they talk about chronos therapy. And if you were having any mental disturbances, you know, stress, anxiety, depression, you were to set outside two hours before sunrise. And you wow. would do and what we now know, science now knows that that's the time when the mo- most infrared light hits the planet. So people using infrared light helmets like we do to help yeah. to mention that. Well, how did they know that 10,000 years ago? Wow. You know, there's something, uh, and they also knew to uh, to watch the sunrises and sunsets. Yeah. This is all part of the Vedas. They would do this to to honor 
you know, the, uh, yeah. the energy or the, the life force that was within everyone. And every ancient tradition does this. So, you know, I like to find the correlations between these ancient traditions and these modern technologies yeah. and how they're really, we're just finding a better way, maybe a more efficient way to do these things. So we don't have to wait for sunrises and sunsets, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. build the technology that does it. Absolutely. So, you know, I was just been learning about what you've been up to and, not that you can count on the media to break any real news, but if, if they actually did that once in a while, I think you'd absolutely see the study that you were recently doing on pain management with brain tap, um, you know, using instead of narcotics and opioids and all these, you know, the array of addicting painkillers that they tend to, you know, apply in these operations and, and in pain management. Um, I, 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 saw that your technology is having some amazing results. Um, and I want to, I would love to hear a little bit more about that from you. And, um, you know, with the big pharma monster creeping around every corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's only two countries, I guess, that, that allow the ph pharmaceutical company to advertise and do these things. And we happen to be one of them. But when we went to Brazil, Brazil has something called Invisa, which is their FDA. And they were looking, Looking for a way to replace opioids, just like America, opioids have gone crazy all over the world because they're very addictive. You know, once people find out what it is, so <clears throat> we're, they were asked. They asked us to do a, a really a pharmaceutical intervention uh, with brain tap, which means they. In the, the it was really funny because the guy who heads up the pharmacology department, which is one of the leading uh, pharmacology departments in Brazil, he came over and did a brain tap session because. They actually renamed their neural lab Brain Tap Neural Lab wow. because of all the things we're doing in Brazil. So that was kind of a, a nice touch. I didn't yeah. know what was happening. They said, "Hey, would you mind if we use your name on the side of the building?" I'm like, "Yeah, go, go ahead and do that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Because of what they're finding, and what they're finding is that with the right frequencies of light, sound, and vibration, the body has its own receptors, like opioid receptors. We have our own receptors, so we can make our own neurochemistry to resolve pain. Now, this is something that if you look at yogis and, and different mystics, they were able to do things without pain because they had, you know, developed those powers, if you will, of yeah. mind or consciousness or cognition. And But the what we found in science is if we can get somebody out of the high beta state, which is our reactionary mind, get them more into this intuitive mindset, then the body starts to create its own analgesia, which is a painkiller. And so the study is being done actually on fibromyalgia. Wow. <clears throat> and what it's already done, it's completed. Now we're just crunching the numbers. And they said they're going to be fantastic. The whole idea is to replace opioids with brain tap. Uh, replace, yeah, give them brain taps instead of opioids, because the worst thing that can happen on a brain tap is you fall asleep. Yeah. You know, the, the best thing you have is you wake up pain free. You know, the with, uh, unfortunately, with every medication, there's always a uh, uh, arm's length, you know, yeah. when you see the commercials on television, when they're naming off everything side that effects, happened. Yeah. yeah, those side effects are terrible. So I believe that everyone should look at natural remedies first. And then if you exhaust those, of course, if you wanted to try other pharmaceuticals, then that's the time to do that. But why yeah. put yourself at risk? You know, so what we're finding is that we did a study here that prompted that with American Pain and Wellness, where we took botched surgeries. These were people that had surgeries that had gone wrong. No pain medicine would help them. So these were wow. people that were in chronic pain. As long as they were awake, they were in pain. Wow. And we, what we did was we gave them brain taps for 10 weeks. <clears throat> At the end of 10 weeks, 90% of them in the study, there were, there were 32 people, 90% of them during the study <clears throat> were pain-free between sessions, which meant wow. they trained themselves to increase their natural bodies, natural analgesia. Now, the others, we just, we couldn't touch, but everyone, 100%, while they were doing the session, told us they experienced a reduction of pain down to a two, going from a scale from one to 10, wow. down to two. And most could get it down to zero um, because they were teaching their body. And we taught them some breath techniques and some triggers, mm -hmm. um, what we would call keywords, things yeah. like that to remind them. And what they found, this is, and this we knew was already the case, but what we found was the more stressed a person is, 
mm. the more the pain is amplified. It's almost oh, like yeah. it gives juice to the pain. So we have to teach our bodies to calm down and heal, get into that parasympathetic state. Absolutely. That's amazing, Doc. That, that Those numbers are unbelievable. I think anybody who deals with chronic pain, if they had, if they, if they heard that, they would absolutely be interested because you know what we build a top, the human body builds an incredible tolerance to things and, and it does it quickly. So, you know, painkillers, you know, they work so good for so long, but you really inevitably have to continue to take more. This is a, this is a, a something that you can cultivate as a, as a response in the body, as a habit in the body, and you can only get better at it. You build your strength and therefore your tolerance to pain by doing this and getting really good at it and building that narrow circuitry in the brain until it, you know, it just lights up for you like a Christmas tree. That's what I love about these, these techniques and this, and your, your technology. It's incredible. I, I was just re interviewing with uh, Julia Arndt, who's one of our providers at BrainTap. We did a research project with her and it was a peak performance podcast uh, because that's what she does. So we did a study with these, peak performers, they were, they were, a lot of them were the Google top performers. Mm -hmm. And these were already the top of their game. They were the best, the best. And what we noticed when we had them do the testing, because they didn't realize this, they would have all qualified to be on medication when we had them do the de depression scale. Wow. And after just six weeks of doing brain tap, 71% reduction in depression on the scale. So when you, and these were people that didn't know that they, they were go getters. They were so busy going, right. going, going. They didn't realize that they were basically working yeah, themselves into a grave. You yeah. know, they, they didn't realize they were going to have burnout. You know, with this great resignation that happened just recently, um, they're yeah. saying that burnout is the number one reason. And I think the, the big reason is that people don't know how to care for their brain. Um, I mean, we had, um, they actually had a 46% improvement in sleep and we never mentioned sleep in their wow. program. Just, we just wanted to see what would happen. You know, we didn't have them, we didn't, but that's a natural byproduct. When your brain starts regulating correctly, we wake up with energy, we go to sleep uh, the way we're supposed to that's and right. we, we recharge. You know, there, there's something, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize the benefits of sleep because they, huge. They've, lost, yeah, they've lost the capacity to do it. You know, they, yeah because they, they stay up all night watching the news and then they, their body's on overdrive of stress. Mm -hmm. And then they try to just close their eyes and go to sleep. It doesn't work that way. No. There's some processes have to happen. You watch Game of Thrones till 2 a.m. and then yeah. try to go to sleep. And, uh, you know, you're, you're giving yourself a little hurl to get over, okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You might be the next victim, you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a dragon may come for you in the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean that you know some of this stuff should be obvious, but we don't. You know the truth is we don't have a society that that brings any awareness to these things. You know it's consume, consume, consume. So you know it doesn't surprise me that there's a lot of people who fall right into that category. Either watching the news is a lot like watching Game of Thrones anyway. So yeah. <laughs> you know same thing. But um, you know I I I I love this subject. I I I think part of the reasons why I've spent you know weeks of my life uh, in a tattoo chair is is because it it's such a, a, an epic journey for me every time. And the way I go in, like if I'm, if I didn't get enough sleep, I know I'm fucked. I'm, <laughs> you know, like I know this is going to be a long five hours if I didn't get enough sleep. And sometimes if I, if I didn't get enough sleep and I'm not feeling, you know, like I didn't mentally prepare, I'm not feeling physically ready to, to go the distance. I'll just, I'll just call it, you know, and thankfully I'm close with my, my guy and he, he lets me off the hook sometimes, but you know, <laughs> there's a spa in New York City that does laser treatments on the legs. Mm -hmm. They used to have to give people sedatives, but they wanted to stop doing that. So they started having them do brain tap at the same time they were doing laser hair removal. Because I guess it was a little painful. I didn't yeah. know. But while they're doing brain tap, they don't feel the pain because you're in an altered state. So, in, but it's, it's your own pharmacy, not, That's right. you're not putting something else into your body. That's right. That's awesome. I never got, I never had that kind of treatment done, but I didn't realize it was painful now. Um, but that's a good idea, man. I mean, you try to preserve hair. I don't yeah. think. <laughs> <it often. laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I remember from our first podcast that, that your dad had some, some amazing protocols um, that were based on hypnosis and other techniques for, for people to go under surgery without anesthesia. And, but what I didn't realize and learn until recently was that you actually had uh, an, you had an op, your collarbone operated on using this same 
pain management technique, right? Yeah, I mean, I had, a, yeah, I, had a, I had a shoulder surgery called a bone graft where they took a piece of my collarbone and put it over here with a screw through it and nothing more than my dad training me. They called it going to level at, um, in Silva, uh -huh. but it'd be more like, um, like a post hypnotic suggestion or something. I, if I did come out once and saw the saws and all that, and I remember, you know, how vivid that was. And then my dad was there and he just said, count back from three to one. And when I did, I was out again and I woke up in the, in the recovery room. Wow. That's, that's, that's amazing. There, there's a, incredible use of, of, you know, NLP and hypnosis. And I mean, talk about that's like, that's like some of the stuff you like legends you hear of like people getting themselves into this thing and then just walking through the fire, you know, or walking over the unharmed. That's, that's gotta be a similar kind of the mindset that they, they put themselves in. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you see when, I mean, all you have to do is put on the Discovery Channel and you'll see some ancient tribe putting, piercing their bodies and hanging yeah. from trees and they have no discomfort at all, but they 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 know how to do that. They didn't just one day decide to, you know, yeah. poke themselves with needles and hang from a tree. They, it's part of their ritual. And so they, they would get into that ritual. I'm not encouraging that, but, right. you know, people, if that's part of your ritual of what you're doing, I, I believe in um, the no pain you still get a gain uh, philosophy when it comes to brain fitness. You don't have to, you don't have to yeah. hurt yourself to get to where you're going. Right. Right. The idea is the most ease, the least pain. That's the, that's the, that's the path of least resistance. You know, it's not about how much you can grit your teeth and bear it, but how well can you create a state where you don't have to, you know, <laughs> that's what I think. But I, I know brain taps become very popular with, uh, with some UFC fighters, uh, athletes like Tom Brady, I think now is, is using it. And, you know, what are some of the studies you're doing with these pro athletes uh, that are, you know, optimizing their performance? What are some of the results you're getting back? Yeah. We're, we're now in the middle of what we call an elite sports study with a doctor out of uh, California. We, he, he's working with top athletes in every field. Um, and we had to tell the athletes to stop posting on social media until the study was done, just because we didn't want to, that to skew what we were doing. They were talking about how rested they feel, how much energized. Now, most of them are in their off season because you, you're only going to catch some yeah. of them during the season and the off season. So this is off season training. We're doing we're, what we're calling it is a neural protective study. We did this already with some of the U.S. snowboarders um, before the Olympics, and uh, they have a lot of rules around what you can say and not say about those studies and the people yeah. in them. But um, we had great results with that because we wanted to. What we wanted to show was why wait until you have an injury to repair your brain. Just everyday use, your brain is going to become uh, compromised. In the stress that we're under, one of the things that really prided me to do this, I read a report that showed one year of chronic stress, like what happened in 2020, mm -hmm. for most people, your brain can shrink three quarters of an inch. Just from yeah. That's because of high cortisol levels. So when you think about cortisol and what it does, it's, it's a driver. But with, as long as you're in that fight or flight, got to go, got to go, worried mo mindset, your brain can't shut off and turn on your healing brain what we call the thriving brain yeah and most people under stress they don't consume the right foods they they create what's called hedonistic behaviors they start eating junk um drinking sodas you know watching porn abusing, yeah <laughs> anything that's going to drive because they want to get out of that feeling there, there's yeah. this feeling and they don't realize that meditation or relaxation techniques can be that solution because they it's not something when you're in the middle of the fire you're like when you're in the middle of the war you can't learn how to uh, no. assemble your m16 you've got to you've already got to practice that you know yeah, you'd fuck you, it up if you tried yeah. you, know, you're like, God <laughs> damn it, because, you know you can't put together a thought right yeah. so the same thing is true we all we have to have these if you want to call them peaceful weapons to arm us against all this assault on our brain i mean right now our brain, we are, we are fighting right now, not a war in physical space and time. We're fighting a war in our mental space in this six inches between our ears. Who controls that controls the world. And unfortunately, some people don't even know they feel good till they, till they look at their Facebook account and see if they got enough likes you know, yeah. <laughs> or did, do they, do they have 5,000 friends or, or right. whatever, you know, whatever is there in, in, you know, they're, when we look outside ourselves too often, 
we leave ourselves empty inside. So we have to look inside and fill that. And then everything else comes, you know, even in the Bible, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all else will be given to you. You know, and what that means is take care of yourself first, like they say on the airplane, you know, put your own mask on first before you help others. But how many times do we see other people telling yeah. us what to do, but they're not doing it themselves. You've got to, we, we got to calm down. Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. What's that? I said, Will Smith. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, the, look, you can, um, you, you can pretend and walk, walk the walk all day. But the fact of the matter is if you, if you don't do the work, if you don't take care of yourself, and I mean, take, if you don't begin to heal and integrate, it's, it's, it is going to come out. It's, it's going to wait for the worst time and come out, you know, especially the, the more front you put on. I mean, like there has to be an alignment between who you talk as, who you, who you, um, the public persona that you put on, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a, there shouldn't be a, a persona. There should mm-hmm. be an alignment between what you're practicing and what you're preaching. And when there's not, you have things like we just saw at the Oscar with, with Will Smith, literally cuffing up somebody who's supposed to be his friend for a joke that he made about his um, uh, wife, who's cheating on him and trying to divorce him. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean like you know clearly th- there was work to be done there um but it's just I, people think that they can just get by and eventually it's going to come out it's you know what i mean it doesn't go away it has to be you have to do the work on yourself you have to heal i always say that um because there's, i know so many people who just think that they can avoid it and and there is no avoiding it it's, it's going to come out sometimes in your best moment, you know, making it your worst. But what most people don't realize is we can train our emotions because emotions are energy and motion. So how are you directing and channeling that emotion? If you're not, if you just let life fill you up with a bunch of crap, fear, anxiety, frustration, whatever it is, then that energy has got to go somewhere too. And unfortunately with Will Smith, there's a saying that the Buddha said, you know, 5,000 years ago, all unhappiness stems from unfavorable comparisons. So he's yeah. sitting there hearing the joke and he's, whatever the comparison in his mind, he had to get up and take action. Uh, even though I don't think I would cuff the rock under any situation. Um, you know, I might want it in my mind, but I would think I would think that one through. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like, uh, you know, th- th- those, unfortunately, a lot of times in those situations, at the expense of anyone, they'll get a laugh. Yeah. You know, there, it's not a, it's not a nice world out there. You no. know, when you, if you, if you're up and coming person, everybody's cheering for you, but as soon as you get to the top, people yeah. are saying, oh, they were just lucky. You know, they, whatever, they'll come up with some excuse why you made yeah. it. It's like people do. I think as we evolve as, as I think as consciousness evolves, which means through us, not mm-hmm. it's, consciousness doesn't have to do anything. I should clarify that anyway. It knows everything and can do anything. It's the underlying reality of everything that we experience. But how do we dip into that and let it shine through? And I think there, a lot of people are thinking they're the, they're, they are yeah. the one. You know, like he did the movie, The One. So so now he's the one. You know, right. he, you can get away with that. Now, if it was uh, back in the 50s, obviously he would have been locked up and put in jail and <laughs> But yeah. now that we're in the world of no laws, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. as long as it's uh, uh, what social justice is there, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, any Sounds laws good. being broke. Clearly, he wasn't worried. You know, I don't think he thought it through. But listen, they, they, they just, anyway, we don't want to get into that. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, apparently they asked him to leave and he said no. I was like, oh, well, I guess you I guess you didn't ask the right way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, um, I remember a time when they, they would have asked in a different way. Uh, right there to him a couple big guys would have came down and said uh yeah. let's go into the back and talk and uh you know but i think that we the the world we live in is polarizing right mm-hmm. i mean we have this we have this group of uh even when we look at things like you don't have to wear the mask anymore yeah right i mean i still am blown away people still driving their cars with masks on. oh i know i see it every who's, day who's in charge at uber why would an uber driver need to wear a mask when there's nobody in the car you know these Talk are insane corporate. things yeah 
Yeah, or you know, you go to a restaurant. Everybody sitting. As long as you're at the table eating, you don't have one on. But they you still have tell to... you in the airlines that you can take your, you, you can take it off to take a bite, but then you have to put it back on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm just shaking my head. You know, I'm just shaking. I mean, thank God they've. You know, they're not as crazy as they were, and that seems like they're requesting to have it drop. But you know, things like that. They're that's t- totally fear based behavior reinforcing you know, these false notions that somehow the air that gives us life is not safe to breathe. How, I, I, I don't even want to get into it. You know, like how far up. Right now we're in a, we're in a psychological experiment. Yeah. If anybody out there has ever been to Astor Forum, these tricks have already been played in a seminar. Hmm. Every one of them. I mean, they're like, they're telling you what to do and how to do it. You have to raise your hand, say, I mean, we're adults. I mean, yeah. it's like, but we don't have any choices anymore. They're taking away our most basic choices. So that creates fear yeah. because the less choices you have, you know, I, we were traveling across Canada with the kids. This was years ago. I was on a book tour and we stopped in the middle of the highway. There's a mother bear and two bears mm-hmm. and they're playing and everybody's fine. They're alongside the road, just watching them play. Some idiot decides to get out with a camera, right? And I'm thinking of faces of death. Oh, you know, man. Just <laughs> I never remember. Faces of death. <laughs> in the, the closer they got, when they got about 30 feet away, that mother bear got up on her hind legs. Yeah. And I don't think he knew those bears can run like 30 miles an hour. Oh, twice man. As, as a human. Yeah. You know, so I'm going, everybody's honking, getting, you know, and so the bears are getting all riled up. But So luckily the guy ran back and got in his car. I'm going, we almost saw faces of death here. Yeah. Because that bear had a lot of choices as long as we stayed back. But right. the closer you got, the more they fought. So what people have to understand is that's the pressure we're seeing right now. We, I think we have to that we have to somehow almost be like Dune, where they say, you know, let the fear pass through you. Don't let you know, yeah. don't let it affect you. You know, so many people are getting infected with fear and they start to believe that's their real consciousness yeah that's the reality you know we and, can- and then and then you really can't make a decision and you cannot ascertain you can't think outside of that fear so you're naturally going to and this is a kind of a a human this comes from the part of our dna that's very primate-ish mm-hmm. <laughs> you know we look to our leader when we're in states of fear we it's just automatically like uh you know when you can't like what do we do you know, and and I see that happening. Very intelligent people throughout this whole health crisis were, and and then and you know now as as it's coming out that those of us who didn't fall into that, a lot of what we tried to say, and many much of which was censored, is true. Was absolutely true. You know, and it well, the, the CDC's but, what's bad is what we're going to see is they're going to say we told you that. Yeah, they've been saying it. Yeah. Put that on mainstream news, but they put it on their sites. Like CDC says it, uh, the World Health Organization is saying the same things, yeah. but nobody's reading it. No, nobody's reading it. Everybody's lazy. They just, what is the news telling me? How am I being spoon fed? What, what, what I always tell people is go look up uh, Wim Hof breathing. Watch a few videos from Wim Hof. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how can this guy that looks like he was just rolled out of bed, you know, out of the <laughs> And, and, but you can poison him. You can literally, he'll let you, he'll roll roll up a sleeve for you. Yeah. Go ahead. (laughs) And then he does his breathing techniques and neutralizes it. That tells me that anybody can do it if they want to do what he's done. If you want to learn, if you want to learn the breathing techniques, these bodies are magical. They are. And, you know, the, the think I always tell people, think of your body as like a a second brain, really, because in psychosomatic illnesses, they manifest in the body, you know, Mm -hmm. in people like Louise Hay in her book, you can heal your life. If something's going on with your body, and if you go to that book, I've never seen it wrong. Right. You know, sometimes it takes some people have to take a hard look and say, oh, I'm not really denying that. And then they go, oh, I guess I am. Because, you know, the body knows. They, yeah. they say the subconscious is always listening. So think of your body like your subconscious. And it. And so when we start upgrading our thinking, we really upgrade our body. We're, these bodies are making a, a, a shift in consciousness. There's a device out there called a CVAC, which is a it basically changes altitude. They designed this technology because people like the founders of Google and and the founders of uh, uh, some of the high-tech companies, they spent literally $6 billion trying to find a pill that would make them live forever. 
We did it for 15 years. And they finally decided that you can't do it with a pill. These were people that had money wasn't an object. You can right. spend any amount of money, but they're still looking like they want a pill. Of course. There's no pill that can do it because consciousness overrides any of that. But what they did was they designed a piece of technology that does it because if, if we work with our body and it's all about um, oxidative stress mm. and how the body, these bodies aren't designed to rapidly age like they are right now. Right. I mean, people think it's great that people are living to a hundred. Well, even most geneticists will say our bodies are designed to live to 120 years old. Yeah. So I would say 240 years old. You know, whatever it's supposed to be, it's certainly not supposed to get sick on the journey. You yeah. know, we, you know, we, we want to be healthy and whole. And you can't be putting, you can't put a toxin in. Right. How, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you put a poison in to make you healthy? No. That just, I mean, that's There's the most no logic thing. to it whatsoever. And what blows my mind is, the educated people that have been so hoodwinked, so yep. invested that I'm going, are you kidding me? Did you not even read anything about the studies? What would make you think that they from, didn't. 19, from 2019 to 2020, somehow the science changed that you should wear a mask? Right. And one of the studies that blew me away, because I'm always looking at what the research is saying. Yeah. And even though it doesn't make mainstream media, they showed that kids are 25% dumber when they wear masks. Their yeah. IQ drops 25 points. The developmental I mean, damage is, yes. is incalculable. It's, 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 and, and it's, we have it's teachers global. unions and things that are still saying we're scared. Oh, we're, dude, oh, they scared those teachers, job. man. I don't know what they did, but they, but the, whoever was briefing those teachers, they did a hell of a job because they, they're some of the most traumatized ones between them and the airline people. <laughs> yeah. I, it's kind of like what um, the and this all comes down to psychology, really, because they've done such a great job on the yeah. psyop of scaring the hell out of everybody. Right. I mean, when early on, I was telling people, go visit your grandparents or That's at least right. call them on the phone. We need connection as humans. The biggest thing we can do for for health and vitality or what I should say, one of the biggest is have community. That's you know, right. we are, we're community-based beings. We're not, we're not, I mean, of course there are those gurus that live in the Himalayas and they are right. able to function, but, but they've done a lot of inner work. They're not, most of us, we would go crazy if we didn't have that connection. Absolutely. So no, we, we, we need it. So in fact, we will atrophy and die without it. You know, the reason why the, the ultimate punishment in a prison is solitude and not torture is because that is that that is much closer to death where you want to you want to kill someone put them in a black hole by themselves isolate them that that is like that's a cardinal rule really of of any living thing i think you know there are some animals that you know you know that are more lone wolf than others but even those they need their environment you cannot function without it you need the yeah. interconnection and, and our pre federal yeah. prison system banned they cannot do isolation anymore Wow. So why did they do it for people here during COVID? It's like, oh my God, you know, it's like, well, they have the TV, I guess they have the TV and the radio and, and the internet. So they're not alone anymore. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, you know, as, as the old saying goes, you know, where the mind goes, the body flows. Right. And, and so mm -hmm. that being said, um, can you explain a little bit about how brain tap works to entrain brain waves because because we we we've been talking about how that in turn creates health you know neurotransmitters that that are catalysts for health and the epigenetics that that switch on and off you know there's a whole different light switch that goes on for people who are doing these meditations and and that right like those things include, you know, incredible immune resistance to all kinds of things. I mean, there's some, some data coming out um, from Dr. Joe Dispenza's work that, that shows some, I mean, re remarkable evidence of how resilient our blood can become to viral infection just through meditation. Um, incredible. You, I'm just, I mean, really you wouldn't believe it, you know? And so, we've been talking about that. And, and so the science behind this, I mean, it's just the, the implications are vast. Can you well, talk a little bit about that? Our brain, our, our brain, the uh, amygdala that 
is controlling everyone's life right now, really, it's been hijacked because its whole job is to protect us. And these bodies, unfortunately, have not evolved as much as we have. These are still the bodies of 200,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we just happen to have technology with them. But the, this part of the brain, they also call it the reticular activating system because it's always scanning our environment. It's protecting us. So as long as it's safe, we're fine. But our ears take in 25,000 pieces of information every second. Our eyes, 2,000. Our other senses, Thousands. So we're our brain is literally processing hundreds of thousands of bits of information every second. Mm -hmm. So if we're controlling the narrative, now what do we focus on? Wherever our attention is and our focus, that's what drives our behavior because it drives emotion. So when we when we think about emotion driving behavior, so what we need to do, or what we what we started experimenting with, this was back in the labs, when the LEDs first came out, we were going, wow, what if we could mimic a candle? Mm -hmm. because there's a meditation of course some people call it the jyoti meditation yeah. where you're staring at a candle and you're breathing and so we were able to mimic that candle flashing with an led we we pre presented that to somebody to watch just like you would a candle and they had even better results than the candle because what wow. we found was we could adjust the we could adjust the frequency of the led so that light frequency now what why is that important if we're near the ocean just using that as an example Everything in the universe is vibrating and teeming with energy, and there's a resonance with it. So we have a resonance. The bed has a resonance. The, the lamps have a resonance. The sun has a resonance, and it's actually broadcasting its frequency to the point that we can see it. Mm -hmm. But we all have a frequency. We all have a resonance. We all have a, a brilliance that's doing it. So our brain, though, is always trying to match the environment. So if you and I were on a spaceship flying toward Earth and we were to measure the Earth frequency, it would be between 0 0.5 and 100. That just happens to be the same as our brain frequencies. We call these Earth frequencies, but they could be known as brain frequencies. Wow. Because everybody's brain can tune to that. So our brain works like a tuning fork. So the environment goes ding, the brain goes ding. It's trying to match that frequency. If it's coherent and you like it, makes you feel good, you'll resonate with that person. Just use the example of people. You yeah. know, if you, certain people, you see them and you instantly have this hatred. Other people, <laughs> you see them and you instantly have this love. Yeah. And sometimes it's good, sometimes that's bad, but that happens in like uh, Gladwell, Mac, was it Maxwell Gladwell? He wrote the book called Blink. Oh, Everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. does that. So we all have this ability. We know what we know, but a lot of times we override that. We, we, we don't listen to that intuition. But what happens with this cortical response in the brain is, and this is what blows people away, is we can we can present our algorithm below human hearing. They think they're hearing nothing in the earphones, but their brain begins to change on the screen. Wow. They go, what's doing that? Well, we think we only have this range of hearing. The reality is that we hear some above, some below. It's just we don't pay attention to it. We write it off hmm. because it's it's not it's not in the known spectrum for us. But that doesn't mean our body doesn't respond to it, kind of like 5G. Mm -hmm. So what happens with earth frequencies, our cells are used to responding to them. These are natural. We've been doing it for hundreds of thousands of years. So if we want somebody in alpha, let's say, we can present these frequencies in three different ways, light, sound, and vibration. Mm -hmm. When we do, the brain begins to create a three-dimensional space because everything that we perceive in the world isn't real. Right. And it's basically made up by us. Now, there's something real here, because if we run in front of a car, we get hit, we get killed. Right. But the reality is that, and from the mystical standpoint, if you will, from a mystical mindset is, it's not real until we make it so, you know, we, we bring it into existence, we conjure it up. Yeah. So what we're doing is what if we could, we can't go to the beach whenever we want, we can't go to the mountains whenever we want. But what if we could put on a headset, that would give us the physiological effect of going to the ocean, going to the mountains, getting that mental vacation, liberating that part of the brain that's been locked into fear and mm -hmm. anxiety. Because unfortunately, we're, there's, this, there's been this battle since the beginning of time, well, light and dark, good and bad, evil, yeah. you know, whatever. And what we have to do is focus on what we really want to feel like. So when you're in those states, what we're really doing, when we're doing the voice and the 
all in, implementing what we call a dual voice process. For some people, that's a lot of information and their brain freaks out um, until they realize <laughs> that, what's that? I said, really? I, I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. So the brain's going, what is all this stuff? What is all this stuff? But then in the middle of that, it starts to feel good because the, the underlying frequency yeah. is one of health and vitality. It's the alpha theta rhythm that we're mostly going to, unless we're going to do a gamma training, which increases the frequency. Right. But there's a there's a band of frequencies between uh, 12 and really about 30 hertz frequency that we find is is really it's it's meant to uh, encourage us to move or to react, interact. Mm -hmm. We need those things to stay alive. But right now, what happens is most people get locked into those uh, what we call the beta brain or the reactionary yeah. brain. Some people might call it special forces brain because if, if you're in special forces, you got to be ready alert. You know, you're being dropped. In right. It's a kind of a hypervigilance, uh, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's not, that's not a good place to be in, no. in the real world where you're just supposed to be interacting with family and friends and coworkers. You shouldn't be vigilant all, all the time. No, you, you should. There's a time. So, so with brain tap, what we've done is we've used earth frequencies all on the different spectrums mm -hmm. to guide the brain in where the brain, when the brain frequencies happen and when we add light to it, we're adding energy to the brain, we're training the brain in different frequencies. Then what happens is with all of this information, the brain then returns back into quote real world, yeah. the real world experience. Now this is easy because we're used to this. We don't have these tones, these lights, right. these frequencies that are training our brain. So like an Olympic athlete, we, we can't, in, we can't really be in a real world competition in Olympics, right? You got to be right. in the Olympics to really have that experience, but we can pretend we're in the Olympics. Like every time we cross right. the finish line or whatever is going on, whatever is our goal it doesn't have to be Olympics. It could be just, I want to have yeah, a better like, relationship. I want yeah, to have a better not health. reacting to, to my, my ex, whatever, you know, yes, my, right. Something as right. simple as that, you know, I mean, if that's the source of your fight or flight, if that's what's putting you in a hype, if you know, every time you talk to your ex, you go into a hypervigilant fight or flight, my blood pressure is to the roof, I, uh, my adrenaline's going, I want to smash something, I hate this, then maybe, just maybe, if you trained your brain to react a different way, you might have a different experience with that person. And, uh, and if nothing else, you're going to live longer because you're not going to be going into that every day. It's not a healthy state. So, I mean, like the, these benefits, that they, they work, however you can imagine their application, there probably is something there. Right. And most of the time, those behaviors you're talking about, even talking to the exes or whatever, uh, those things are fear based. Yeah. There's something going on. There might be something with is a lot of people don't want to face it, but there might be something you need to forgive them, yourself, others. You know, exactly. one of my favorite sayings I tell people is, uh, you know, you've got to forgive yourself for putting up with this for so many years. You know, we one thing is that, uh, you know, there's. And not that this is the case for you, but uh, let's say somebody's in a relationship and it doesn't yeah. work, but they were told their whole life that once you're married, you got to stay married the rest of your life. And no matter what, you got to tough through it. Then you get a divorce. So all of that pre-programming yeah. is in And now you didn't live up to those, that requirement. So at some point I, I had to tell people, could you imagine you were just placed here on earth? <laughs> we gave you a past. It's not yeah. real. We just gave it to you. And we gave you a projected future. You don't have to follow it, but this is what we said. But you have the power in this moment. If you really knew that to be true, what would you change? Yeah. Because that's true. Your past yeah. is not real. It's been distorted, deleted, and changed to support your current belief system. And so what the problem is you can't change it at the conscious level. This is what Einstein said a long time ago. He said, you can't change, you can't solve the problem in the same level it was created. No. You have to go to the solution state, return to the problem with the solution in mind. This is brain tap. Yeah. You would have a problem. You go to this powerful subconscious mind. It knows, and it's part of consciousness. So mm -hmm. you don't have to know the answers. Even um, in the seven habits of highly effective people, he says, Think of the end result. That's right. Earth. Begin with the end in mind. He says. Yes. So the subconscious knows how to get you there. If you can think of the end result and you really are honest with yourself and you're patient with yourself and loving with yourself, That's right. you will have the behaviors, the attitudes, beliefs, the people will show up, the events will show up. Life will become magical again. But as soon as you start to interject or think that uh, you have a better plan. Yeah. Then, or, or try to... <laughs> 
try to, you know, imagine and expect when or how it's going to happen. So these are the things that get in the way of this, this, you know, like, but, but if you trust the process and you, and you trust the feeling and you're honest with yourself about it, you know, that's when you allow magic to come in. You, if you're yeah. trying to think, well, maybe this is going to, you know, now I know she's going to be, you, you cannot put expectations on it. You really yeah. have to leave it open. That's where magic yeah. is. When Steve yeah. Jobs said, you can always connect the dots backwards. You know, we need to, what we're learning now is that we can connect the dots forward. Yeah. You know, that the past and the future are just made up anyway. So let's make up what we really want. You know, the, the best way to invent to create the future is to invent it. So what can sure. you do? What what are the action steps you can take? Like I can't control what our government's doing right. or any government around the world, but I do have a say in my local market, in my local, and I do That's get right. to vote with my paycheck. You know, so, you know, you can do different things, but do them in a way that's healthy. You know, personally, I could care less what they're doing, but they're interfering with my joy. <laughs> so right. every once in a while it gets brought to my attention, but it's like, I don't want to be consumed by that. Like right. my dad was before he passed away. I mean, his, I think his dying thoughts were some negative thing about <laughs> politics, you know, so, so, you know, and I would rather have my, my last dying yeah. thoughts to be, or at least my last thought to be about some um, yeah. ancient tradition or something I was practicing, trying to master to improve consciousness or something like that. You know, <laughs> you have to have a, you have to have a different focus. Although I've been accused of being too positive all the time. So I think that, um, you know, they, they do know that the more optimistic, the more positive a person is, the higher their immune function is. Absolutely. So, you know, apparently I had COVID, but I never experienced it. Right. And I'm yeah. just one of those people that lucked out to have asymptomatic, whatever. Right. Experience. And, you know, but in, and I do believe that, you know, there's negatives, but nothing could outweigh the fear, the fear mongering no. that uh, how many lives that destroy. That's yeah. worse than anything. I mean, yeah. it, absolutely. There's no, the, 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 we will never be able to truly calculate the amount of damage done. And, and I don't even like to think about it, but you know, it, the, the fact that, you know, it's like um, the way people are coming out of this is so funny to me. You know, it's almost like, you know, when you, when you get all hot and bothered and you, and you, you, you start going into a, a state of lust or whatever, and then, you know, you kind of come to your senses afterwards. You're like, whoo, I don't know what came over me, you know, and you just kind of walk <laughs> away and it's like, wait a minute, did you just destroy the whole bedroom, man? You're not going to clean that up. You know, like I, I just see this shit show happening. I'm like, every, everyone was in a fucking frenzy for so long and, <laughs> and you're just going to, you know, zip up your pants and walk away. That's cool. Fine. Okay. Whatever. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's no, oh, I sorry mean, about that. Let me clean they, that up. They don't even mention it. They don't, they walk out of the room. They don't even know. You never get to hear about the room again. No, no. It's like they, they don't there's another to. room. There's another room that they're destroying right now yeah. <laughs> that, you, that your focus is on. And it's like, and so people will go, COVID, what about Ukraine yeah. war? What about there? There's always something else that they put our mm. attention on. And I think we have to stay aware of those things. I'm not saying be blind to it, but right. we have to take care of ourselves first. No, you know, if, if you're, if you let that disrail your own personal health and freedoms and forget that, you know, what we have, you know, somebody once said, who's going to come save us? Right. Who's going to come save America? <laughs> if, if this thing keeps spiraling, there's yeah. no one, unless we're going to get aliens or something come in because we're out there saving the world. Right. Yeah. Or at least we think we are. That's what they say. And, yeah. 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 So, I mean, and the, the whole thing is that it's all about what is going on in our own hometown. I mean, right. what's going on with human trafficking? What's going, I mean, these are, these are all problems that are happening at home that yeah. should be solved, but there's a, there's a bigger reason. But I think with, to put it back to brain tap is if we don't have our own, if we don't have our wits about us, we don't keep our stress levels low. That's right. Once we know, like when, when I used to do boxing or martial arts myself, and we were doing competitions, we knew if we could get the other guy angry, yeah. we won. Yeah. Because they would be off balance. They, they wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. So um, we were talking about earlier about being angry. We used to, I taught my kids, don't let anyone else ever take your remote control. Don't mm -hmm. let anyone else have the power to push your buttons. Yeah. You know, you're giving them the power. And I still remember one of the clients, when the when I first had my first realizations, this was years ago in practice, 
And this woman, she was about 70 years old and she kept talking about her mother. And I'm thinking mm. you God. are, I was, I was only 26 years old at yeah. the time or something. And I'm going, how long has your mother been dead? <laughs> oh, she's been gone 30 years. And I said, no, she isn't. She's, she's alive right every day. And, yeah. she and, and I said, you're letting her beat you every day. She goes, what do you mean? I said, you were only your child for 20 years. She's been yeah. dead for 30. And you've been telling me a story here that seems like it happened yesterday. Right. I said, you are, you are, you are reliving this in psychology. We call it revivication. So she was bringing it back to life every day. Yeah. I said, so what's worse, what your mother did to you when you were a child or what you're doing to yourself every day. Right. Let's start forgiving yourself for, and, and forgive your parents. Yeah. You didn't live up to the expectations. No big deal. They didn't live up to yours either. Yeah. You know, there was no parent university. They didn't go get a certificate. And no. say, hey, you know what? You you qualified. You get they to had go no have fucking a idea what they were doing. <laughs> right. No, they, they had some hormones raging yeah. and they said, let's produce this kid. They didn't even think about producing the kid. They were no. just producing their uh, That's right. excitement. You are the moment. result. <laughs> yeah. And, the, the you know, look, everybody does the best with what they're working with. And, and sometimes that's better than it is you know, for others. And some people don't even have that. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of levels, but, you know, be grateful for whatever you had. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the more you can be grateful, the more you can forgive. And, and, you know, whatever happened to you, you, you can, you can be better in your life, whether you have kids or whether you're a teacher and that's your kids, or, you know, whatever you're, we're always modeling behavior. We literally, right. well, from, from the moment we walk down the street, you are modeling behavior, you know, whether you want to admit that or not, but people, people are affected by it and they learn from it. So it's, you know, it's you, why not do it in the best way? Why not put your best foot forward for yourself, not for anyone else, you know? Um, and, and that will lead to a more joyful life. Who doesn't want that? I mean, you can white knuckle this anger and the, and the, the jadedness that comes with, you know, certain career choices, life choices, whatever, but I'm telling you that it, it that it, that's your choice, and eventually, you know, it, you're gonna you're gonna have to admit that it's a choice, you know, and that it, maybe it's now a habit, but you could break it. Brain tap is a is a fantastic way to to begin to reprogram the 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 subconscious, and then therefore the body for happiness. You know, I mean, it's been proven. It that's what it does. You don't have to do anything. You literally sit back with headphones on and enjoy the ride and you will enjoy it. So, I mean, it's like, why wouldn't you want to experience this? I do every day. Yeah. I'm sure you, uh, there should be a link you can share with them where they can try it for free. Oh, absolutely. And I will. One, yeah. of the, one of the things that I always tell people is try it for yourself. I mean, do it for 21 days or 14 days or whatever and find out if it works for you. If you do, you'd be like the other you know, 97% of the people that stick mm -hmm. with the program is because you're getting a result. And the whole thing is about getting your psychology and your physiology to agree that it's okay to live this life in on purpose, on time, with intention and joy. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And with joy, have a purpose that, I mean, whatever you do, you are an example to someone or to something, you know, be the best you show up. And this happens as we started to talk with biophotaic exchange, mm -hmm. your cells are changing. Every cell through epigenetics is changing. The, the expression of your cells is changing every 40 seconds. Every cell, every system, every organ of your body is being upgraded or downgraded based on your behaviors, your attitudes, your beliefs, what you eat, what you think, people you hang around with, mm -hmm. what you watch what you listen to, all of these things are playing in because we're not fixed beings. We yeah. are, we're energy beings. We're, we're always representing ourselves in, in expressing ourselves in different ways. So the more we can get in touch or tune into that inner calm, the yeah. better it's going to be for everybody. Absolutely. And, and you will see the ripple effects of that in your life and, you know, mm -hmm. it, with the people who you interact with, I promise you, when you start to embody some of the changes you believe everyone else needs or want to see, you will begin. It's the opposite. It's, it's like we're, everything we're taught is kind of so backwards. You know, you'll see it. I, 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 I know it. I've experienced it. And, and I've had people who just, they come up to me and they said, dude, I tried that. I tried 
really embodying the changes that I always wanted to see in my so-and-so. And And it worked. I'm like, really, (laughs) really? That's amazing. You know, that's amazing. Just try it. Um, I was, I would, I I know you got to go doc. I wanted to talk to you about uh, NeuroCheck. I I was using it with Hunter in Florida. We were having a blast, man. I got to get one of those. I I love that program. I wanted to talk to you a little about that, but I I, I know you're on a time crunch. Um, We'll just have to do this. uh, Yeah, we can do that again. We, we, We need to get you one. We need to give you some. You can be out there being an ambassador with a with a neuro check. Oh help man, I would love that. To do those scans because people don't realize how science has come along. That it, all these topics that we used to talk about in the seventies and eighties that people thought were just metaphysical mumbo jumbo. We used to call it cosmic foo foo. Even now, they're <laughs> showing no. This is, there's some science here. What yeah. these gurus were doing, the reason they were chanting, the reason they were sitting in certain postures, the reason they were doing it was all to bring their nervous system in alignment with cosmic consciousness, and yeah. to get that alignment and get that energy flow through the body. And things change. And it can be measured now. It can be measured. That's now. what I like Absolutely. about it. When, when you can start showing people uh, that you can do a certain behavior, and get a certain result. And if you consistently do a certain behavior, you keep upgrading your energy system. Yeah. And um, I mean, uh, our, our good friend Hunter, he sent me his meditation results with the NeuroCheck this morning. I was blown away all the gamma that he had. So uh, so we should do another talk at some point and we can yeah, talk we'll about NeuroCheck to. and talk about some of the and things. I mean, uh, what he showed me this morning was just blew my mind. I mean, that usually you would have to do a psilocybin or something like that yeah. to get that kind of uh, you sure he didn't activity. eat any? So, I don't trust we know that the, <laughs> You don't trust him? I said, you sure he didn't eat any? <laughs> There might be some residual effect there. there might be some, yeah. You know, one of the one of the things that we, we experience with people with brain tap is if they had done something in their earlier lives, maybe in college or something like that, mm-hmm. they seem to the, the experience of expanded consciousness seems to mirror that. They go, wow, yeah. that was like a DMT trip, or that was like an psilocybin trip, or that was like an acid trip. Because, because when the brain starts to balance, it we these are all receptors we have in our own brain. Mm-hmm. So we can create those experiences and we can up, up regulate that, that experience. So you can yeah. have more, if you want to call it spiritual experiences or enlightened experiences. Absolutely. And it turns out there's a direct, uh, there's a link between the chemistry, the biochemistry that's happening in the mind and the body with some of these altered states, as there is when we go into, de- you know, deep state meditations and, and trances. So it, it's, it's really all the interconnectedness of things continues to blow my mind. Everything you're doing continues to blow my mind, Doc. It's so great to talk to you, man. I, I'm sorry we're a little short on time. I know you got to run. I appreciate the time that you that you have. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to do this uh, do this again and get into the to the neuro check and, and some of the software. Maybe we'll do a vlog, and uh, you know, I'll come over and we'll really uh, we'll play with this to, with this technology. You're welcome to come to our bio lab. We have a really nice lab in in New Bern. We have a 14 station bio lab. It- It'd be cool to get you to document it. We could do a brain scan with you at the oh, lobby, that'd be awesome. all the different things and show you all the different tools. And we could do a little, um, you know, I'm sure that the audience would love that because they've always yeah. asked to see our, uh, we have some technology that's nowhere because we invented it, but never took it to market. So mm-hmm. you can see it and play with it and uh, be there. You're welcome to come on down. Just I'll email there. you. I'll, we'll make, I'll make arrangements. I'll come down. We'll shoot a vlog. It'd be awesome. I'll see if Christina okay. can come. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. She'd love that. Cool. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And be well. You too. Take care. Thanks, Doc. Bye.